All right, welcome to GeekWire, everybody, from GeekWire.com in Seattle. I'm Todd Bishop. And I'm John Cook. We're excited to be here on location this week at the Microsoft Store in Seattle's University Village. A big thanks to Microsoft for hosting us here and sponsoring the event where we have a live studio audience right here in the back of the wow, Microsoft this. Store. This is, this yeah. is, this is exciting. <laughs> All right. So a big thanks to everybody for joining us here. You know, Microsoft's in the middle of their 12 days of deals here at the Microsoft Store. So I know things have been hopping here at University Village. Yeah, so you might hear some chatter in the background as the shoppers cl clutter in. Exactly. But a big thanks to all of you for joining us for this special recording. We love our listeners and readers, and it's great to see so many of you here in person. And we've got a big show lined up. In the news segment, we'll be talking about Starbucks delivering coffee. And Steve Ballmer, I don't know if you know this, John, he's got a problem with Microsoft. And oh, we're going to no. be talking about that right here in the midst. It might get a little bit awkward, but it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Later on, we'll be talking with Larry Herb, better known as Xbox Live's Major Nelson. And for those listening on the radio show and podcast, we'll be doing a special version of the GeekWire trivia contest with a chance to win a great prize from Microsoft and Xbox One. Wow. With tons Big. of new Big. games, with three new games and an Xbox One. So stick around for that. And later on, we'll also get a chance to hear from some of the GeekWire nation here in the audience and invite some of the folks in the audience to step up to the mic. So stick around. It's going to be a great show. And John, we're here in the midst of the tech retail mecca of Seattle. You've got the Microsoft Store, the Apple Store, the Verizon Store. And you and I actually made a special visit earlier today to the newcomer on the block, the Amazon Bookstore. The Amazon Bookstore, yeah, our first time in it. We spent many, many weeks trying to uncover <laughs> what was going into this corner of the uh, of the mall here at, at University Village, and we were one of the first to jump on the news that Amazon was opening a bookstore, of all things, a physical bookstore. Uh, and um, my impressions were relatively positive walking in, and it, it was it, it had a nice feel to it, don't it, you think? It did have a nice feel, and it actually made me feel somewhat let down because, as you said, we did spend many weeks actually trying to figure out what Amazon was going to be doing in that store, and it's a bookstore to a large extent. I was fascinated by what happened when you walked in, though, John. <laughs> yeah, it was it was unusual. I probably milled around for a good five minutes without any customer service interaction. No one approached me, no one asked if I needed any help. No one, no one came up to me and you said, John, go, go wait in the middle of the store and see how long it takes. <laughs> I, I turned on and my they, stopwatch. they actually came and found you first. They did. They found you first. Um, it, because you're going on vacation to Hawaii and you've decided you're going to get through one book I haven't on read a vacation. book since starting GeekWire about five years ago. So <laughs> I, I figure it's time maybe uh, I read a book. I always feel a little uncomfortable when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very well read. I, I read GeekWire every day, but that's it. So, so I put on my stopwatch. It took about three minutes before somebody approached us. Which that was after the initial five minutes. Right. Yeah. And, and I, it felt like a very Amazonian approach to retail. It was kind of like, we're here in the background if you need us, but not necessarily... But very different from the customer service approach that they, they you know, expound right. on en endlessly. Um, I, you know, overall, I think the experience was, was positive. Hey, I did find a book even. Yes. In fact, yeah. we've got the book right here. What, what was the book that you got? Uh, it's a new biography on Richard Nixon. Yeah. I've got it right so. here. Being Nixon, a man divided. Highly recommended. Hey, I was a history major in college. I wanted to <laughs> dig into the, the, the 70s and see what really happened there. But one of the interesting things was they don't have prices on the shelves. That's right. And so they can do dynamic pricing. To figure out the price of an item, you actually go up and you scan the book. And then they, the, the, the scanner tells you what, what the price is. Yeah. So. yeah. And that was a fairly easy system to use. Overall, you know... I'm curious whether Amazon is really going to stamp this out on a larger scale. Obviously, Amazon historically tests a lot of their services in Seattle. We've seen that with Amazon Fresh, for example, and grocery delivery before they took the bigger steps to expand it uh, uh, nationally. And I'm wondering if they're going to try that with, with a retail footprint. It really seems to go counter to Amazon, but it's also a weakness for their business that they don't have that physical uh, connection with their customers. I, my prediction, I think you'll see by 2017, 100 Amazon stores rolled Whoa. out across the U.S. That's, that's my prediction. Okay. Two years, I think you'll see it. All but right. the other fascinating thing was as you went up to the clerk and asked her for advice on a history book, the first, <laughs> the first book that she gave John 
was a graphic no- novel. She gave him a cartoon. Yeah, it was comic book. <laughs> she, she was really sizing me up. She's she like, was. this guy hasn't read a book for five years. I think i got to start with something with a comic book, something he might be able to get through. Uh, so anyway. Right. Okay, so that sets the stage here at Seattle's University Village where we're recording the show this week at the Microsoft Store. But let's now jump right into it with our weekly news roundup, The Week in Geek. All right, so this is where, yes, we play the music in our head now. And then we add it later. All right, John, so it was a big week. I got a chance to test out before anybody else. It was historic, actually. Do you know what happened? Do you know what happened, what I got to do before anybody else? You ordered a coffee. I ordered a coffee for delivery from Starbucks. Literally, I was the first person not from inside Starbucks who got to test out the new Starbucks by Postmates delivery. So you know the details on this, Hey, this is this, like right? your, you were the first person ever to test out the Amazon locker system. That's Remember right. Remember that? At, we the, have the, yeah. at the 7-Eleven on Queen Anne. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, now now you, you are really making some history. That's, that's right, exactly. So Starbucks this past week with Postmates rolled out a brand new service, Starbucks Delivery by Postmates. It's actually got some really interesting high-tech stuff behind the scenes that makes it work. Now, Postmates actually already delivers some Starbucks. They do it through their own Postmates app. This, though, is through the Starbucks app. It's an extension of their mobile order and pay. So right now, across the country, you can go into their app, uh, basically order coffee on your phone, pay for it on your phone, and then pick it up yourself in a Starbucks. The new test that they've got in Seattle, that they just started in some Seattle neighborhoods. Unfortunately, not here at University Village because we were going to have coffee delivered to us on the show. But and all a, of you, too. Yes, exactly. Gonna, oh, yeah, yes. That, now you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in some neighborhoods of Seattle, you can use that same service to go into the app, order your coffee or food, and then Postmates will actually deliver it within 60 minutes. Although in many cases they say it's less than 30 minutes, less than a half an hour. And yeah. I got my coffee, the first historic delivery, in 17 minutes. What's, was, what Starbucks were you at? Uh, it was in Pioneer Square. In Pioneer so Square. I was not actually out of Starbucks. That's the thing. I yeah. was in an office building. That's oh, yeah. where we conducted the test. Yeah, yeah. I was in an office building. Uh, what's, so it was a Starbucks in Pioneer Square that delivered your coffee? That's too. right. Okay. So th- the fascinating thing that they do technology-wise is they use geolocation. So first off, they find the Starbucks that's closest to you, and then it goes into the Postmates queue, and a Postmates courier claims your order and says, just like under a normal delivery, that they're going to deliver it. Yeah, and it's what, five ninety nine to deliver? Five dollars and ninety nine cents. Yes. Yeah. So that is the catch. This is not something. So it's yeah. More than your coffee drink. Yes. But they're talking about this for bulk orders. Is right. Where it's really going to come into play. Yes, exactly. If you are the kind of person who has to order coffee for the the team. Basically, this is the yeah. service that's Which for you. I really wish we could have tested it here because there's a Starbucks, as there is in most uh, Seattle locations, about 40 steps from here. So that's it would right. have been really fun to yeah. have it sent here. And as you said, <laughs> we were going to spring for coffee for everybody. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But are, are you getting a little tired of all these delivery services? I mean, it just seems like it's too much. I mean, there's there are so many and there's so many... I, there's so much money that's flowed into the sector. It, uh, it seems like at least this is one industry where there's a, a big bubble. It, it is. It is. But I will tell you, Starbucks did this in a really smart way, I thought. First off, they did not try and do this themselves. They partnered with one of these delivery companies that's basically flooding the market, Postmates. And the second thing is the geofencing that they're doing. So to, to ensure that your coffee is hot or cold or that your food is actually fresh, what they do is they track the courier on his or her way to the store. And when the courier gets within a certain location or within a certain time away from the store, then they trigger the ticket that makes the order. So basically when the courier is just a few blocks away, they start the order. It's, it's really smart. And I'm, I was actually very impressed with the way they pulled it off. Now, the delivery fee is the problem. Five ninety nine. dollars I mean, it, it is for a, for a one-off. This is not gonna be the way you're gonna get your morning latte, for example. So that is, that is the issue. Yeah. So, all right, so that is coming from Starbucks. It's being tested just in the Seattle area for now, uh, but they are being cagey about this, but it looks like it probably will be expanded nationally just as they have with order and pay. All right, the other really fascinating story, and again, this we're here in the midst of Microsoft, but it's, it's hard to, to not pay attention to this news this past week. I went to Microsoft shareholder meeting, and Steve Ballmer was there in the audience. Now, I did not happen to sit next to Steve Ballmer at the meeting. I wish I had, 
because Dina Bass, a reporter for Bloomberg News, did. And Steve Ballmer, the, the former CEO of Microsoft, who used to be up on the stage taking complaints from cranky shareholders, was himself the cranky shareholder in the audience complaining about Microsoft. It yeah. was fascinating. What do you think about this new role for Steve Ballmer with a reporter well, next to him? Well, that, that was the question I had. Did the did he know he was seated next to a reporter? Was like was this prearranged to be next to Dina so, Bass, the, the Bloomberg reporter, and he was going to provide commentary as the meeting went on? Or? So I have some behind the scenes. Okay, I want to hear it. it. So first off, Dina is an excellent reporter. She cov she's covered the Microsoft beat for many years for Bloomberg. And let me tell you, Steve Ballmer knew what he was doing if he said those things to her. He was speaking on the record. This was not a case of a reporter eavesdropping, yeah, okay. <laughs> which, which at any rate, um, the, the other thing is I got the sense that this was his way of kind of sending a message. And the two messages he sent, one was a little bit esoteric. It was about Microsoft's financial reporting in the cloud. Microsoft reports its commercial cloud revenue on what's called a run rate, an annual run rate. So they take one quarter's worth of revenue and they say, if that was extrapolated over a year, this is how much we'd be getting. And he says they should actually just report it like a regular business, re revenue for the quarter and profit for the quarter. And that, that's a legitimate complaint. The other complaint I thought was actually a, a little bit more to the core and much different, diff much was actually a little bit more to the core of Microsoft's struggle right now on mobile devices in particular. You know, Microsoft has lots of strengths still and things like Xbox, where Larry's going to be talking with us later on, uh, and also things like Windows 10, but they, they've struggled on Windows phones. And Microsoft is coming out with this universal app platform where they're trying to make all the apps work across everything they do. And that's their strategy for Windows Phone under Satya Nadella. And Steve Ballmer's comment was basically, well, that won't work. <laughs> that's, that was the that's direct quote. Literally what he yeah, said. Yeah. Literally what he said in the audience at the Microsoft shareholder yeah, meeting. Yeah, yeah. He wants them to do Android apps on Windows Phone. Right. So, right. It was it was unusual, but probably pure Blomer, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so. I, I love it. I love the fact that he's back, and he's a crank. Yeah. Well, he is still the largest shareholder of Microsoft, that's right. so he has every right to be there and probably speaking his mind. That's right. Our our headline was uh, Steve Blomer speaks out from the cheap seats, and somebody pointed out that for him at least. Those, those seats are not very cheap because <laughs> he owns uh, many, many, uh, I guess, hundreds of, what would it be, billions of shares or billions of shares of, of Microsoft stock. So, all right. So those were the, the two big news items of the week. We also, of course, had the big announcement from Mark Zuckerberg about his plan to give away the majority of his Facebook shares. I was struck by that in part because he is so young. He's in you know, his early 30s. Yeah, this Facebook thing, it might not catch on. <laughs> so uh, who knows? Exactly. <laughs> but no, he's in his early 30s. You know, Bill Gates wasn't in, in his... It, it, Bill Gates it waited until his mid-40s yeah. to establish yeah. the Gates Foundation. So, And there's a lot of parallels between Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates in terms of how they built their companies, how they think about philanthropy. Uh, and speaking of philanthropy, we had a big story on GeekWire in the past uh, 10 days here. We celebrated and had a, a, a really wonderful profile written by Lisa Stifler, one of our colleagues, about Bill Gates Sr., so Bill Gates' dad, and just the amazing impact he's had in the Seattle community and on the, the, the life of Bill, obviously, and beyond. And um, Bill Gates Sr. is just a wonderful man who just turned 90 years old and has really helped spark the tech industry even before Microsoft here. So yeah, great. Uh, it's a great profile, and I recommend everybody read yeah. that one. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we are at the Microsoft Store in Seattle's University Village this week recording the GeekWire radio show and podcast. We will be right back around the corner talking with Xbox Live's Major Nelson on GeekWire on Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. All right, welcome back to GeekWire. We are recording in front of an audience this week. Live audience. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, welcome. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. <laughs> At the Microsoft store in Seattle's University Village. Big thanks to Microsoft for hosting us here. And our guest this week, Larry Herb, is from Microsoft. He's better known as Major Nelson. Uh, people may out there may know him as Xbox Live's director of programming, That's although right. we, we know there may be an update to that, Well, actually, Larry. it's funny because, you, you know, right before we were going on the air here, you're asking you the title, which is a, always a great question. It's, it used to be director of programming. It's now changed. My title is actually Major Nelson. What? Oh, like if you look in the global address book at Microsoft, <laughs> that's what it says. So apparently I've created my own class of, of career. Did you ask for that or no. was it just bestowed were, upon I, you? I remember that somebody was, uh, a couple of people in the department were like, okay, well, we're going to change your title. It's not going to be this anymore because it doesn't really capture what you do. It's going to be Major Nelson. I'm like, 
Okay. <laughs> well, it's interesting. It's one of the questions we had actually for you. What What is it like operating as your own kind of independent brand within the Microsoft With, family? I'll it's, tell you, it's it is. I'll tell you, John. It's it's fascinating. Um, you know, I started doing this. Um, what was it? Twelve years ago, thirteen years ago is when I joined the Xbox team, and. What happened was, is this is when we were a small group of people. Uh, I mean, there were there were less people working on the Xbox team that are here. I mean, it was a small, small team, and I just started having this dialogue with the community because gamers are really passionate about what they do, and that's why one of the things I love about it. And it was at the point right before all the social stuff happened. This is before Facebook. This is before Twitter. This is before YouTube. And I just started embracing all those tools to communicate with the fans on behalf of Xbox. And then it just kind of took off. I could never, never do it today if I started it. I just don't think it could happen. Because yeah. there's just so much out there. Every, so much everybody's out there. doing what you, yeah, you, everybody's do, what you started precisely, doing. Precisely, precisely. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's been interesting. So as you said, you've been at Xbox, I believe, since 2003. Correct. Is that, that about right? Okay. That's right. So there have been a ton of big games released this fall, <laughs> right? And Microsoft's like Microsoft likes to say this is going to be the the biggest holiday for for Xbox yeah. ever. Yeah. I mean, Rise of the Tomb Raider, yep. Fallout Four, yep. of course, Halo Five, Halo Five, uh, Halo Five Guardians, right? Rock Band Four, Just Cause Three, Star Wars Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront. If you were to pick one game, just one, your desert island game, as it were, of the games that have been released over the past year, what would it be? I would have to say, just over the past year, I'd have to say. Fallout 4. And, and why is that? Because right now um, I'm a level 32. Um, like, I don't know. I don't know how many hours I'm into it. It's just a game that there's so much to this game. I, it's, you know, it's, it's a real pure gaming experience where you sit down and you're like, you know what? I'm going to go on this quest and do this, do this quest. And it's two and a half hours later. <laughs> so it's just one of those things that just keeps going. Um, hopefully after, by the time I finished it, I'd be you know, discovered on the desert island. <laughs> but that may not be possible, because the game just keeps going. What, what about games of, in other genres, like sports or kids? Or, are there other things other than shooters and action games that, that you're into? Oh, of course. I mean, I love, you know, one of the, one of the great games we had earlier this year is, uh, is Ori and the Blind Forest. Right. Beautiful game. The artwork, the music uh, by Gareth Coker is just stunning. It's award-winning. And that game is so is so beautiful, and that's that's kind of a more of a a, a platformer. Uh, so yeah. that that one really adds. Of course, the, the the other one that we that everyone likes, which is just kind of relaxing, is is Minecraft. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you just go in there and do whatever you want. There's this beautiful soundtrack playing in the background. Yeah. So Minecraft's also a lot of fun. I should point out Linda Brenneman, who's the founder of a great site called Pixelkin, is yes. in the in the audience with Hi, us Linda. here. And uh, they, they love Ori and the Blind Forest. I know that's right. one of their favorites. Yeah, right. It's, it's a great game for, because Pixelkin is all about families and, and family yeah. gaming. So yeah, that, and that's that's exactly what it's all about. And there's great puzzles to solve with your family. Of course, Minecraft is its own, and they all love Minecraft because it's a it's it's the Legos of this generation. Um, so so yeah. What about unreleased games? Because you get a, a sneak peek of a lot of sure. upcoming games. Are there any games? In the pipeline for late later this year or early well, I next? Think, I think probably one that I get a lot of questions about are um, you know like the new Gears of War, Gears of War Four, yeah, which is coming out uh, you know next year. Um, so that one is certainly that's not family friendly at all. That's obviously for a much more mature type of gamer. Um, but there's you know there's scale bound. There's there's just there's quite a few. The the challenges and I'll tell you you, you talk about the fact that I get access to the early game. I actually don't like that. I'll tell you why. I want to sit down and play a game and have it unfold in front of me the way the developer wanted. I don't really want to see it halfway done because I don't want to have any spoilers. I, you know, I always, I spend, I've spent a lot of time down at 343 Industries, the developers of Halo. And over the years, I remember I was, I was going down for a meeting and I was in a conference room and it, the meeting hadn't started yet. And I was just kind of hanging out and I was looking at my computer and I was looking up on the whiteboard. And I'm like, what am I looking at? And I got really upset because on the whiteboard, they had all the major moments in the story. And I hadn't played the game oh, yet. Oh, jeez. So yeah. I, was, I was just like, no. And I was like, I turned away and I put my back to it. But I, I like to enjoy them just, you know, I don't like spoilers. I just don't think that I want to I want to enjoy a story and, a, and, a, and an experience the way that the developers intended it. Yeah. So as we mentioned, you have been at Xbox a while. Yeah. What's been the biggest change you've seen in the more than a decade that, that you've been there? Um, the fact that the gaming is now a massive 
entertainment force. Oh yeah. You know, we certainly all remember it's it, in some time in some you know it ebbs and flows, but it often eclipses Hollywood in terms of revenue generated. So that is one of the areas that is fascinating to me. Is like you know back in, back you know when I first started, my family was like, "You're working in video games, <laughs> really?" Now it's like they've all heard of Halo. They've all heard of Ori. Everybody on the planet knows Minecraft. So it's 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 been interesting to see how it's just grown so exponentially over the years. Yeah. So talk a little bit about Minecraft. Yeah. That was obviously a big acquisition for Microsoft sure. here recently. How do you think that's going to change gamers, uh, the future gamers that you're trying to cultivate? Well, uh, you know that is, that is a great question because because there it's going to allow. It's going to create this new generation to think uh, analytically, like they, they, it's you know it's 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 because in order to do things you're like okay I want to build X Y or Z, okay well you have to come up with a plan. Do you have enough resources to build this thing? What's the design look like? Is it is it going to stay up? I mean obviously in in Minecraft it's not going to come tumbling down usually, um, so it's it's just going to allow them to think analytically and but more importantly here's something that's really interesting John is I hear all the time from families and, and young kids and, and, and so forth that, okay, they have a Minecraft server and they're playing Minecraft with their friends and their friend, little Joey, ruined their game and they kicked them off the server. <laughs> so it's almost the new playground yeah, where, the, yeah, where, they're, where they're testing social boundaries and they're learning social skills in a lot of ways yeah. inside of the game. Yeah, so I have a six-year-old son uh, who absolutely wants to play Minecraft. He sure. is just he he wants it so bad. He yeah. can taste it and he's 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 played with some of his friends, but my wife is very anti video game. Sure. How do I convince my wife that this might be a beneficial thing for him, or should I not? Well, I, th I th no, I think you absolutely should. Um, if <laughs> look who yeah. you're talking oh, to. Oh yeah, Michael. right. <laughs> I mean, look at this. I think the best thing to do would probably to, you know, let's. I'm not going to tell you how to run your family. No, I need, uh, I need, I need some help here. But I, I, I would sit down and I would just bring bring your wife in and 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 bring your son and have your first experience together as a family. Um, sit down and come up with a plan, he, and maybe your son certainly probably watched a lot of videos and say, "Mom, I want to build this," and have him build something, hmm. um, and, and show. And that way, you can kind of you can kind of see these skills come out. You you may have a budding architect, yeah, in your in your family. You may have a budding engineer. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things that it can do, and I think you should sit down with the family and just because it's a lot of people think video games are, are you know, are they, they some of them certainly they can be violent, and there's other issues there. Um, but they're not just that, right? Really I, that, that's the struggle I have in my own family sure. is is facing that yeah. with a right. a wife who is anti-video game. Here's my advice for you: Do not start with Gears of War four. No, 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 no. That's, that's, no. You don't. That's no. No, and that's and that's the beauty of, of Minecraft is that it's it's universal. It's we're building together. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in my world that I created. Come into my world. I mean, that's really powerful for anybody, especially for children mm -hmm. with their incredible minds. Right. This is great stuff. We're talking this week with Larry Herb, better known as Major Nelson. And as we just found out, that's also his title. That's my title at Microsoft, at Microsoft, the official title. So my business card says. <laughs> awesome. We are going to be right back around the corner from the Microsoft store at Seattle's University Village. You're listening to GeekWire on Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. All right, welcome back to GeekWire from GeekWire.com in Seattle. I'm Todd Bishop. And I'm John Cook. We are recording on location this week at the Microsoft Store in University Village. We've got a great audience of loyal GeekWire radio show and GeekWire readers. It's great to have you all here. Yeah. Hey, all right, thank yeah. You. Thank you. And our guest on the show this week is Larry Herb, better known as Xbox Live's Major Nelson. Larry, we actually got a chance to sit down with Phil Spencer at yeah. our GeekWire Summit. In many ways, you know, even though Phil's the head of Xbox, you are sort of the, the public face of Xbox because yeah. of your presence. Did you guys ever like you know arm wrestle over who's the, the most popular figure in the leadership? No, I mean it's it's great with, with the Xbox team. I mean, I, I am blessed with the fact that I get to talk about and represent a lot of the work that the men and women on the team do. Um, and I am so proud of what they've done and what they're doing and the plans they have. So I'm I really no Phil and I we have you know he's when he says something it's it's you know he and I work together. I go by yeah. his office all the time. There's none of that at all. I mean it's we're just excited to be working on this on the on the project. We love Xbox. We love games. So one of the things that he told us was that he's not paying as much attention himself to the PS4 sales race, sort of right. the market share right. game. 
Uh, and of course, he acknowledged, hey, some people might be cynical out there and say, well, the reason he's not paying attention to it is that Microsoft isn't ahead right now. Sure. But I, I'm really just curious, how much do you pay attention to that internally as a team? Does, does it motivate the Xbox team to try and sell more units than the PS4? You, you know, selling units is just one of the many numbers that we look at. And certainly we want everyone to understand what Xbox can offer. And there's, there's you know, a lot of games out there and so forth. And we've sold millions of consoles. But it's, it's about what are these people doing? You know, are they buying more games? Are they spending a lot of time online? But we certainly look at the numbers. I mean, that's, that's how you understand what the competitive landscape is like. But at the end of the day, we know that you know, we talked about the top of the show. We talked about all the different titles coming out. There's some amazing titles coming out this year. And there's a, the, we, the, the Xbox One has an incredible portfolio, not to mention the backwards compatibility. That, that's a great point. So it's the holiday season. And yeah. obviously a lot of people at this point in the generation or in the year are making a decision on whether or not they stick with what they've got sure. or they upgrade to a new console. I'm actually one of those people. I have an Xbox 360 at home. Yeah. We do have an Xbox One in the office that we were playing today, by the way, in preparation. What were you playing? FIFA. We did a little FIFA. Okay, good. Yeah. We, yeah. We, and yeah, that's there's a whole other issue there that we ran into that I'll, I'll get into in just a second. Okay. But, so my major hurdle on the Xbox 360 right now is that my daughter loves, loves, I can sit her in front of it and she'll play it for hours. Yeah. Connect party yeah that game is it's a bunch of mini games for people who've never played it we sure. actually bought it we don't just use the trial yeah and you can it's just a lot of fun it's a lot of fun there's a lot of interactivity with the screen what does she like simple. about it she can see herself and she can very easily impact what's happening on the screen sure that that's what it is and my daughter is just turned five okay so, so that's that's the that's the, the right genre. age yeah that game is not on xbox one that has right. been and, and i know it's like a very uh, specific Consumer problem. Yeah. Very Fix specific. Todd's problem, please. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have top men on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what would you say to somebody like me who is reluctant to upgrade to Xbox One because sure. of a, a an issue like that? Look, I mean, that's that's the beauty of like Xbox 360. It's it's over 10 years old now, and if, I feel so old when I say that because I launched the launched the console and worked very hard on it. Um, because everyone has their favorite game. And, you know, our goal is we want to bring as many games as possible to Xbox One through the magic of our, our backwards compatibility program, which is extraordinary in itself. Um, but th there's a lot of, there's certainly a lot of, of other types of Kinect games that she, you know, she may want to do some Dance Dance Revolution. Yes, right? that's true. Yeah. That's true. So there's a lot, there's that types of game. We have... Um, Just Dance is a good one, too. Just Dance, exactly. We've got, uh, we've got a Rare certainly has some great titles with the, with the Rare Sports titles. Um, so there, there's a lot of other types of um, experiences I think she may experience uh, okay. on Xbox One. And, you know, <laughs> this is some, somewhat of a, uh, a digression, but... One of the most popular posts ever on GeekWire oh, was written by Taylor Soper, who's who's he's, here, our reporter in. in the audience. The headline, this was long before backwards compatibility sure. was actually announced. Right. The headline was, yes, you can. How to play Xbox 360 games sure. on the Xbox One. Sure. And you know the trick, right? Well, yeah, I, I remember when we were developing Xbox One, we talked about this, and the, 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 the trick is, is plugging it into the HDMI import of the Xbox One. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell you how many hate emails we've Why? gotten over that story people because of the headline oh i see <laughs> clickbait really gang <laughs> not intentional actually okay. we actually don't do that normally thank thankfully you guys came along and actually did it right so you so now the post is even more popular <laughs> right, right. That's, that's true yeah. that's true right hey it was true we were just a few years early good deal so i want to talk a little bit about esports yeah halo is getting into the it's the halo world championship sure halo that, world championship happening next year right it, tell us about where Xbox is headed in terms of esports, and for people who don't know, this is competitive gaming. Yeah, I mean, competitive gaming is 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 huge. Um, it's been happening for many many years on the PC platform, and we, frankly, it's been happening for many years on the Xbox platform. I, I was one of the very one of the very first Call of Duty World Championships, what three, four, five years ago. So there's certain games, and there's a uh, that, that really lend themselves to the competitive nature of of gamers. I mean, look. Uh, esports is huge right now with, with, like I said earlier, with with the, with the PC platform. And what we've noticed is when the and when the Halo team with 343 Industries was designing Halo 5, they realized this was part of it. They actually brought in pro gamers that sat on the on the development team and said, "How about we do this? And how about we do that?" Oh wow! Right. So they really embedded them in the team. So it wasn't just like, "Hey, what do you want?" And go see them every six months. They were sitting right there in the office. So Halo 5 is a great example because it was built from the ground up. To, do, to, to really support esports and this next generation of gamers that want to um, really show what they have in the esports arena. 
Okay. For for the outsider who's not into gaming, why why does this appeal to people? What like get to the root We've of this the same, for us? Yeah, the same problem We've, with we've Twitch had, too. We've had this like debate watching. on the show before, well, but I want to hear your thoughts. Okay, on so like why 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 do people do this? Because the, it's 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 competition. I mean, it's it's why why do you want to go and play? soccer or football it's it's competition well I, I guess i'll probably get criticized for this but i would say because it's it's it keeps you physically engaged mm -hmm. so this this keeps you mentally engaged no that's true you know yeah. it's it, just, it, yeah. it it exercises different muscles do you yeah. have a do you have a problem with the word sports in this context yeah don't get me going on my sports rant i okay. i probably shouldn't go there <laughs> no it's 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 a um it is it, you know, I, I hear this conversation all the time. People are like, well, it's not really sports. Well, it's it's esports, you know, and it's competition at its pure. And, and I've I've seen some of these people, and there's massive amounts of money on the line. Absolutely. So yeah. that's so let's absolutely. not let's not look past that. Oh I mean, no, absolutely. I agree. It's it is huge. I it mean, is, and and it, it and getting back a little bit, it also teaches a. There's a lot. Look, I didn't have esports when I was growing up. I, I tried my hand at soccer and didn't do very well because mm -hmm. uh, I'm a nerd. Okay, it just wasn't my thing. And I wish I had esports when I was growing up because I probably maybe I don't know maybe I would have been able to make a make my way yeah. in the video games industry. So what is what is on this topic? What is Microsoft's plan to compete in this arena more aggressively with with Valve, Riot? How how are you going to make? I, I don't make know. It, well, let's be clear. Valve's a platform. You know, they, they, they really support esports directly. I, I, I not that I've seen. Um, well, the, uh, yeah, they are obviously heavy heavily involved in the Dota two champion. Oh sure, yeah. sure. Okay, from that perspective, right. Yeah. Um, so you know, so let's talk about that for a second because the. By the way, love the love the guys at Valve as well. Um, <laughs> Covering your butt there. No, no, they're they're great. I love I love I love them. But what one of the things that we're doing? I mean, look at the end of the day, if you look back to two thousand two, when we when we brought Xbox Live online, that was the beginning of the esports era in some regards. I mean, it's certainly one would argue, okay, it goes yeah. back maybe even further than that when you and I would, when I'd come over to your house and we'd play on the, on the same screen. On the couch, yeah. But now, for the, now we have the opportunity to take the world and connect the consoles. Now at any time of the day or night, I can log in and I can find a game, regardless of where I am. Uh, so we've built uh, the, the platform, Xbox Live, and Xbox is the platform to really support it in a lot of different ways. Um, whether it's through the online matchmaking so that, you know, it's kind of like, think of that as like, I don't want to say, it's kind of the beginning of it. In other words, we can kind of get, I can kind of hone my skills and have a pickup game. Mm -hmm. Now it, 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 it migrates into a professional um, scenario where we're in, in a location, we're going at it. So we're supporting it through the platform and then we're also supporting it through the hardware. We have our award-winning Xbox One Elite controller, which gamers are, are we're, we're selling out. We can't keep them in stock. Because it feels good in the hands and it really ups your game and allows the, you to do things with an Xbox controller you've never been able to do before. Yeah, this is the one hundred and fifty dollar controller, sure. which is that. I mean, that that's just insane. I mean, normally it's about three times the the cost yeah. of the, the yeah. normal control. But elite gamers and even just everyday gamers love this. When thing. you pick it up, you you feel the quality, you feel what it can do, and the the customization both in hardware and software. It's 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 unmatched right now in the marketplace. Good deal. We are. On location at the Microsoft Store at Seattle's University Village this week, we're talking with Major Nelson of Xbox Live. His official name, or his real name, is Larry Herb, uh, but he's uh, Major Nelson in both name and title now, yes. as we've been yes. saying. So we are going to be right back around the corner with your chance on the radio show and podcast to win an Xbox One from Microsoft. So stick around for that. We'll be right back on GeekWire on Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. All right, welcome back to GeekWire. We are on location at the Microsoft Store in University Village this week from geekwire.com in Seattle. I'm Todd Bishop. And I'm John Cook. And it is time now for the return of our GeekWire trivia contest. It's been a little while. It has been a while. Yeah, it's yeah. about time. It, it, and we got, wow, a great prize, don't it, we? Absolutely, we have a fantastic prize. For you folks out there on the radio and the podcast, if uh, you... From the pool of correct answers to this trivia question that we're about to ask you, we will pick one person at random to win an Xbox One, courtesy of our hosts here at Microsoft this week. And I believe they need to pick that up in the Microsoft Store, correct, yes. so, in order to be eligible. That's right. We'll give you all the details in just a second, uh, but let's first give you the trivia question. And we're going to also challenge the folks here in the audience. we got a different prize for them. All right. Here it is. You ready? Don't... Call her a princess. What will be Leia's new title in Star Wars: The Force Awakens? For you. 
All right. So if you know the answer out there on the radio show and the podcast, just send your answer to contest at geekwire.com. Once again, that's contest at geekwire.com. And the trivia question is, don't call her a princess. What will be Leia's new title in Star Wars, The Force Awakens? And if you send your answer to contest at geekwire.com, we will pick one person at random from the pool of correct answers to win an Xbox One, courtesy of our hosts here at Microsoft this week. Good luck. Again, contest at geekwire.com. All right, Larry, so yes. we, it's been great talking to you, and we, we really appreciate you being on. We're My talking pleasure. With, Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We're talking with Larry Herb. He is, the, he is Major Nelson at yep. Xbox Live, the director of programming. He's been there for, for quite a while. Uh, now, you got a degree in broadcasting. How are we doing up here? You guys are doing all right. Yeah, I'm impressed. What, what would be your tips for us? Uh, you got I, a couple newspaper fire, guys. Fire me. <laughs> 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 well, no, no, you guys are doing great. I think you're doing fantastic. I've, you know, I listened to the podcast in the past. I listened to it on the yeah. air because I'm an old radio guy. Yeah, and we should point out for people out there who love podcasts, Major Nelson Radio. Yeah. You haven't been doing as many episodes I'll, lately. I'll tell you, we just recorded one earlier today. Oh, good. So I'm in, I've got my radio. That's why I'm all dressed up because you dress for radio. Oh, right? yeah, absolutely. I can see, I can yeah. see you do that, John. <laughs> um, but no, it's, uh, it's, uh, I do have my own if you at majornelson.com, which is my blog. And, and if you want to know anything about Xbox, that's where you go. Great. So just recently, Microsoft rolled out the new Xbox One experience. experience. Yeah. So for people who are familiar with the old Xbox One sure. experience, what are the highlights? What are the things that you would really call out as as compelling to, and maybe even a reason to upgrade to the Xbox One? Well, it's it's first of all, uh, you know, backwards compatibility, which we talked about earlier, is part of that uh, conversation. Right. With the new Xbox One experience, we looked at all of the data of and and how our uh, how the users have been and using the console over the years. And we're like, okay, this is, you know, we certainly did a lot of research going into it, but then we learn a lot. Once you ship a product, you learn a ton about how, how the fans are using it. And we went in and we said, okay, we need to make things faster. We need to put these things over here, this thing over here. So it was really just an evolution of how our customers are using it. And that's kind of really a, a thread that goes through the entire organization with Xbox. You know, you can go to feedback.xbox.com and submit an idea for anything from a game to, you know, to, to an, uh, you know, an idea for the console. And we look at that, the team looks at that, and you can vote them up and vote them down. And we look at that, and we want to do things that are developing the console in concert with the, with, the, uh, with the community. And a lot of what NXOE, New Xbox One Experience is, is a lot of what the, the top requests. Okay, gotcha. So, so my, and this is my last question, and then we're going to turn it over to the audience yeah. here. But so much of gaming takes place on smartphones yeah. these days. And we talked about this a little bit in the first, we talked about this a little bit in the news segment. You know, Microsoft has struggled on its own first party hardware sure. on that with Windows Phone. The market share is obviously yeah. Yeah. much less than iPhone and Windows Phone. Where is Xbox's future in that context? If you guys don't have your own solid first party smartphone. Well, you know, it's a great question. First of all, you know, for we're seeing a lot of uh, Xbox is now this this euphemism for gaming across the PC as well. You know, true, right? especially on Windows 10. Right, right, especially on Windows 10, with the Xbox app is great and the the game bar and all the great things the teams have done there. So uh, you know, it, mobile is part of that, and we certainly have a like. If you go over right now, I believe on iOS, one of the top games for sale is what Minecraft. So we, you know, so it's right. it's we want to we want to make sure that we're bringing the right content to the right platform. Um, you know, we've all played types of games that maybe are better on mobile versus on console. I still think there's room for the high def experience of a console, this family experience that that John, I implore you and your wife to get your well, son. I'm going for it. Yeah, <laughs> I need some help. So yeah. I, I I think it's it's we're looking at all the different ways that we can extend the existing gaming experience across. You know, if you even on iOS and Android, we have a smart class app. So you can kind of stay in touch with the Xbox ecosystem that way. Does, does, it, does that no, mean the same question? No, no, absolutely. And what about HoloLens? What can people oh, yeah. expect there? Because that that is a mobile a mobile device unto itself. It, yeah, it sure is. And and you know, HoloLens, as you've probably heard Satya and the rest of the team say, is that really it's it's they're 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 experimenting with a lot of things. It's not going to be a gaming first device. It's it's just it it really is that's not what they designed it for. Eventually we will, and I've played some amazing games on it. But right now they're focused on shipping a great product and making sure that it's going to be uh, hits all the hits all the right notes of what it is. And it's there's some really cool stuff planned. I can't share anything, but it's some really cool stuff. Oh, planned. we're among friends here. Yeah, just just a few million <laughs> friends, no big deal. <laughs> that's great. Let's open it up to the audience. Yes. So uh, who's got a question for Larry? Okay, let's swing it over here. And if you don't mind, just saying your first name. But, but, Step on. Into the microphone. Yeah, step on up and just say your first first name. Yeah, first and last name. Uh, I'm Tate. 
Uh, Hi, Tate. Hi. So what are your thoughts on Gamergate and what are you doing or Microsoft is doing to mitigate gaming related abuse? Yeah, we'd say, you know, that, that's a, that's a interesting question. You know, Microsoft has always led the way in terms of uh, making sure that there's a quality in gaming. Uh, is that specifically what you're referring to? I, I think, want to make sure I, think, I, I think he was question. talking about abuse and gaming. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, the, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a small, small percentage of people that try to aggravate others online. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of tools in place that enable our community to, to manage and self manage to a certain degree. We have, you know, we have one of the largest uh, teams uh, in the, this, this space doing uh, enforcement and investigation to make sure that people are behaving. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have any tolerance for that. You know, we want, to, we want to create a nice, safe gaming environment that's respectful. And that's really what it's all about. There's no reason why people can't expect that. And we want to make sure that we can offer that as well. Yeah. Some of the issues have arisen on, on platforms like Twitch. And I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are about, about Twitch. Um, are, are, is that something that you participate yeah, in? Do you, I, think, I, do you think it's a, uh, the future of gaming? And, and explain how that well, works. Yeah, well, John, so Twitch is, Twitch is an outlet. I mean, that's really, it's almost... It's where gamers go to stream. They want, you know, you kind of alluded to it earlier in the show where you didn't understand Twitch. And Twitch is one of those things where, like, there's, there's people that are out there. When you, okay, let's, let me put a fine point on it, John. When you, and your, when you and your wife sit down and start playing Minecraft, I guarantee your son is probably watching videos from, like, Stampy, who is a huge YouTuber and Twitcher who's an expert in Minecraft. He'll show your son how to make a X, Y, or Z, how to make something in Minecraft. So Twitch is just a, a great platform. Again, gamers are very social, and they like to show what they know and interact with, with communities. Twitch is uh, a great platform for that where people can, you can watch and see how games are played and learn things. I'll tell you what's also it's interesting. It's where a lot of gamers go to say, I want to buy this game. What's this game all about? And here they're watching unfiltered gameplay. Is there an issue there competitively for Microsoft with Amazon now owning Twitch? Obviously, a lot of the platforms really rely on it in many ways. But you've got Amazon that's make its, making its own games at the same time it, it's bought this. Yeah. It, do you have any competitive concerns there? Not, not to my knowledge. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, Xbox is a huge part of uh, the Twitch, um, yeah. you know, the Twitch landscape. And let's be clear, the, the Microsoft's other gaming platform, Windows, is also part of the, right. the gaming landscape. So not really. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a it's a great out outlet for gamers and we, we how much time it. do you spend watching games on twitch i go over there i want to see what what the top ones are why are they the top ones? that's what i always ask i'm like why is this interesting and that's what i want to know so I, I you know i try to go over there a couple hours a week and see what's going on and i, I stream myself as well yeah right. anybody else want to jump in go ahead linda. hi linda Hi, I'm Linda, and um, I wanted to ask about family gaming with the Xbox. I think it's a great uh, platform for that. And I'm kind of wondering about what's the next great couch co-op kind of game where families can all play together in one room? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so uh, family gaming is, we've got a his long history of family gaming, and we've certainly done a lot of great work in that department. The other area that we do that I think is really important to talk about it's kind of it's kind of next to your question. I'll get to your question in a second. Is the parental controls we have very important on the Xbox, where families can set up accounts for their for their family members, where adults and um, uh, can set up uh, accounts for their kids and feel comfortable of who they're communicating with and the content that they're exposed to. We do a lot of work in that space, and I want to make sure that that's also that's that we also bring that up. Um, yeah. So as far as far as couch co-op and some of these other games are concerned. Um, I can't really go into specifics because we're working on a lot of things that are unannounced. Um, I would love to share some with you, but I'll say that we, we know that there's a lot of there's a lot of families out there that want to do uh, that want to do um, you know gaming together on the couch. Whether like I say it's Minecraft or some of these other types of games, we're we're always looking at some cool stuff. And our friends at Rare have some great ideas, and they've produced some great games in the past. So we, all of our studios are are noodling on some really interesting ideas right now. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kate. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, what was your name? Kate. Hi, Kate. With a K. Um, and I was curious, uh, you were just talking about you've been obviously with Xbox for 12 years. Yes. You've seen the industry firsthand and in a lot of different avenues. And I'm curious if you've seen the demographic of the quote unquote typical gamer change. Yes. And what that looks like. 
Uh, great question. Uh, I have seen, you know, there, there's this perception that it's a young male audience. And there's that's certainly that's certainly uh, an audience. But what we're seeing is there's a lot of the, the it's certainly getting a lot more female. Um, and what I'm seeing is it's I don't want to say it's a majority yet, but it's climbing. It's a very fast growing area. Um, and this is something that I'm really excited about because it's 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 going to challenge us as a platform to do new and exciting things. The platform it's going to they're going to you know perhaps push us in ways that that we haven't thought about before. So I, th there's actually a lot of uh, a lot of female gamers right now, and it's also older. Uh, we're seeing a lot of older folks game because here's reality: we love PC gaming. I love PC gaming. But sometimes uh, they want to just uh, the PC tends to be in an office and you're by yourself and you're sitting in front of your computer. And a lot of people do that all day long today. You know, now they want to go into their, their, um, into their living room and sit back and have the controller and be sitting next to their loved ones and their family. So we're seeing a lot of um, people that grew up gaming, you know, m men and women that now have families, they're now doing with family, they're trying to, they're trying to bring that in. So we're seeing a, a definitely a lot of different parts of the um, demographics get, uh, kind of expand, with especially, especially with female gaming. Thank you. This is great. Well, Larry, thank you very much for Pleasure. being here. Thank you for having me. It's a lot of fun. And I should tell the audience out there, we, in fact, will be at the Microsoft Store in Bellevue next week. Our guest on the show will be Panos Panay. Oh, he's great. Yeah, You're going to love Panos. Who heads up uh, all the Microsoft talk Surface, Surface stuff and hardware. Uh, yeah. So we got two great Microsoft guests. We're wow. really happy to have you. If you want to join us, just go to geekwire.com. Look for the microphone in the upper right-hand side of the site, and we will link to the registration page. We'll be at the... Microsoft Store at Bellevue Square from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. next Thursday, December 10th. Because really, you know, a few weeks before Christmas, you want to go to the mall. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right, great stuff. From the, from the Microsoft Store in Seattle's University Village, I'm Todd Bishop. And I'm John Cook. We'll talk to you next time on GeekWire on Cairo Radio 97.3 FM.